Hey, dude, hide me! Whoa, 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 hey, what the, what's going on? You! Yikes! You threw off my schedule for six months! You are going to pay! Ari, Ari, down. He's here for the collab now. Isn't that all that matters? Not until I bludgeon him. <sighs> Desperate times. <sighs> Aw, that's so sweet. Now, honey, we'll do the collab and then you can chase him later, okay? What? Okay. So... <laughs> Oh come on! Mind telling me how you got in here? Well, I was just coming by to see if you were interested in collabing with me after I had a really hard time working up the courage to do so. That doesn't explain why Ari wanted to bludgeon you with your own spine. That doesn't seem physically possible. That's what the last guy said. Ow! Ow! Anyways, how did the whole chasing thing start? Well, if you must know, it's because the two of us actually planned this out months ago, but I was constantly throwing her off. And it's because I wasn't feeling confident about it at the time. See, when I first came around, I was causing a lot of trouble for others, and I was being a bad influence on people. Even after I apologized and moved on from that behavior, I still felt insecure about my past. Basically, I do a pretty poor job managing my emotions. Even recently, I got into some trouble with some people, and it made me a little nervous about working with you. But, after finally giving it some time, I figured, what the heck. So, here we are. Oh, sorry, were you saying something? <sighs> You're a jerk sometimes, you know that? I get that a lot. Oh, Commander, stop expecting me to do things exactly when you ask them. Commander, why can't I play my Game Boy while standing post? Commander, why won't you let me drink dip spit? Who would want to drink dip spit? You underestimate the ambition of a bored soldier. Ah, crap. Someone jumped off the second floor into a kiddie pool filled with sriracha. It burns! Don't take them to the hospital because they won't learn anything if you do. True that. The main attraction! So the episode opens up with Applejack and Twilight setting up a concert. Wow, Applejack! Are you sure you've never managed a concert before? Well, it turns out doing up a concert's the same as setting up a rodeo. Doubt it. Yeah, you don't need cows and bulls to set up a concert. Yeah, but what if we did? Then we'd be watching barnyard animals. And thanks to Pinky's Connections organizing the Pony Palooza rock concert, we've got quite a lineup for the Helping Hooves Music Festival. Wow, did they just reference one of the chapter books? That's some pretty good cross-media continuity. Don't get used to it. Don't get used to it. Aw. So Pinky arrives and says that she's booked the biggest pop star in Equestria. Sapphire Shores? Sapphire Shores? Please! Sapphire Shores is merely the second biggest pony pop star in Equestria? So the Pony of Pop is now the second biggest pop star? Oh, that's nothing compared to what she brings up next. I have booked... The one. The only. Countess Coloratura! No, she's not. Songbird Serenade is. Yeah, I don't mind celebrities voicing pop icons in Equestria that much, but the continuity of who is the biggest star is pretty flimsy. I mean, sure, pop stars are a dime a dozen, but the ones in MLP seem to get unseated pretty fast. Well, that's showbiz. So then everyone freaks out when Applejack says that she's never heard of Countess Coloratura. <gasps> <gasps> Though I did know a gal named Coloratura when I was just a filly. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be the funniest thing if that Coloratura and this Coloratura were the same Coloratura? <laughs> Subtle. Do you have any idea the number of hoops I have to jump through to get her to perform at the festival? A whole lot of hoops! That pony is very demanding! I completely understand. We artists require certain necessities in order to do our best work. What? No, we don't! Here's your macaroni and cheese with imported Gruyere and Romano, with popcorn chicken on the top for your Monday motivation. Thanks. That sounds gross. Can I have a bite? No, it's all mine! Then Applejack begins to reminisce about her childhood with Coloratura, or Rara. They were even in a talent show together. Equestria, the land I love, a land of harmony. Wow, puberty hit her like a truck. And her cutie mark glows without the aid of a map? Well, add that to the list of things about cutie marks that make no freaking sense. Why does it glow? I mean, she's exercising her special talent, but plenty of ponies do that without it happening. I guess Rara's just special. Just like my dog. Your dog glows? 
No, I mean he's special because he keeps stealing people's glasses. When I get my vision back, someone in this building is going to be seeing stars. Speaking of stars, looks like she's shown up, and yeah, that would be pretty weird to see your childhood friend suddenly grow up as Lady Gaga. It'd be even weirder to have her give you just a single glance and not perform unless she had certain amenities, but we can quickly put two and two together that part of this is her agent, Sven Gallup. Who will be our fantasy punching bag for the day? But yeah, this is something that a lot of people go through. Reconnecting with childhood friends after not speaking to each other for years can be a bit of a shock. It's just like Rarity says. It can be hard to accept such a drastic change and we put ourselves in a bit of disbelief. And we usually do it because we need time to adjust away from our childhood perspective. Then we move on to the rehearsal of the song Razzle Dazzle. Wait, they named a song after that one line from Lost? Razzle Dazzle! Okay, I'm not usually one for pop music, but this was actually pretty good. The music itself isn't really a parody or satire of pop songs because they're not really making any jokes or statements with the lyrics. It's more of just being a generic pop song to make sense in the context of the episode. The visuals, however, are definite parody. The flashing lights, gaudy dancers, even the auto-tune spell, it's all pretty goofy. There's a definite narcissism to the performance here that we see a lot in popular culture. But it turns out that most of it is just Sven Gallup's idea. And to be fair, obviously his ideas are working. She is the biggest pop star in Equestria, at least until the movies came out. We even see that Raura's diva persona was just something that Sven Gallup was projecting on her. Because apparently Raura wanted to hang out with the kids, but Sven? Bring me 500 pre-peeled, pre-cored apples, and I want those things in 24 hours! But that's impossible! Okay, if Pinky says that it's impossible, then you know that it's impossible. Now, even though we obviously don't approve of this, obviously it's pretty smart of him to do. In the end, he's the one who made a lot of the decisions that helped Rara get so popular, and he knows how much ponies would kill to have her. It's a simple but very effective network of extortion and blackmail. Also, turns out that Apple Bloom was mentioned in Rara's letters. So, wait, if Applejack wrote to Rara from childhood up until Apple Bloom was old enough to move around, that means that Applejack's parents died sometime in that time frame, and Applejack probably wrote about that too. Go, fanfic writers, to your keyboards! Applejack confronts Rara about Sven's demands, but Sven seems to have done a very good job hiding his greed from her, so much that she sticks up for him, and it does sound very believable. Except for one part. What? But he knows how important charity is to me, and leaving the festival would completely ruin my image. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a bit of a gamble he's taking, asking for those comforts under threat of pulling out. Unless he was bluffing, like... You didn't get it. Oh, I suppose it will have to do, but I expect some better compensation later. It's a classic guilt trip tactic to bleed out more favors from someone. How are you so knowledgeable on the subject? It's in The Art of War. No, it isn't. Have you read it? No. Then shut up. We see that Applejack insists on exposing Sven Gallop, and Rara reluctantly agrees to go along with it. The plan goes off without a hitch. Surprisingly, did Sven really not see Twilight? You two are hanging in the middle of the air. How could I not see you? Also, what's with that projection and recording spell? Can you just record anything you see and hear? Where is it stored and how long? Can it be tampered with? Isn't this a dangerously easy way to sneak information or embarrass someone? Man, security must be a bitch in Equestria. I hope the laws equipped to deal with it, which again begs the question as to why they're so little. There's a simple two-word answer to that, my friend. Asshole. You clearly don't understand the real me. Symbolism! So then Sven Gallop leaves, obviously, to find some other naive hopeful to exploit. And given the relatively similar visuals and the fact that Ra Ra is no longer the biggest pop star in Equestria, I think we all know what happened. What are you... Oh, no. I can see a rainbow, and the tears as they pour out. God, I hate that guy. Anyway, Rara still wants to do the concert, but she seems to be getting cold feet. This is gonna be a disaster! I'm gonna be terrible! Can you give us a minute, Rarity? Certainly. I love Rarity's expression. You can tell she's thinking, freaking drama queen, and I'm just giggling at the subtle hypocrisy. The real perk of friendship is getting to see your friend being true to their self. And Rara, when you're simply yourself, you're the brightest star I've ever seen shine. 
I don't think that message really flies all that well when the greatest hit songs nowadays are all written by one guy. Yeah, I realize this is pretty cynical, but in practice, a lot of the be yourself and stay true to who you are rhetoric gets called into question when people do get popular from following the crowd and being resourceful. However, what makes this message work is that it isn't made about success. They twist it to make it about friendship, and that actually changes the meaning for the better. When you're honest with yourself and put your heart out, you really see who your true friends are. A true friend might not understand the things you're passionate about or exactly what makes you tick, but they're happy that you do anyway. True friends don't want to see the masks or decorations. They don't want the showboating. They want to see you. I will admit that it's a very basic and cliche message, but what really gives it meaning is how Applejack delivers it to Coloratora. Throughout the episode, we see how she establishes her strengths as a supporting character. And one of those strengths is bringing out the best in others. She gives her Philly Hood friend the confidence she needs to get over her anxiety, and she teaches her that all you have to do is be someone who's honest with themselves. And also how they should never forget where they came from and how they got where they are now. This song may be familiar, but yet it's totally different. Kind of like me. Get it? GET IT! And then we get to the song. Parts of it are a little on the nose, like the whole there's more to me bits, but overall it's a very sweet song. There's a good reason that Ra Ra and Applejack became friends. They value honesty and openness. Admitting you make mistakes isn't easy for a lot of people, and showcasing not only the best, but the worst aspects of yourself is really putting it out on the line. This song number was glorious. There's just so much about it that makes it feel very special and one of the best in the whole show. The visual direction is very well done, with a gentle blend of colors and wide views of the performance. The way the camera gently pans around the stage lends you into the atmosphere and helps it feel very soothing and comforting. Of course, what really makes it stand out is the lyrics and the range of the singing. The words mirror a lot of the character development Coloratora has experienced without it feeling foamed in or forced. And seeing AJ getting teary-eyed at the sight of her friend expressing herself in a new light is actually very touching. It means so much because you've seen everything she went through in the episode to help her grow as an individual, making her accomplishment have a sense of passion to it. And Coloratora's singing voice is pure gold. The tone of her voice just feels so triumphant and sophisticated. It reaches a lot of highs and lows, making for a balanced range. It's a very emotionally involving song that I still find myself replaying whenever I come back to this episode. It's really just that good. So then we see who won the contest, the Cutie Mark Crusaders, because of course they did. They end on Equestria's national anthem, and that was the main attraction. Wasn't great, but wasn't awful either. We got to see a little bit of Applejack's childhood, and Coloratura had a unique arc as an XP. Had a few flashy effects and nice backgrounds. Not really much to say about the episode. Though, a lot of people forget that this was Amy Keating Rogers' last episode. In a way, this episode kind of does feel like a send-off. And a really good send-off at that. Years ago, I made a tribute to Amy Keating Rogers and her entire run on the show. And looking back on this episode now, I'm really glad I did that because this one really shows what kind of presence and impact that she left on the one she wrote. Personally, I've never really cared for who was writing which episode, but with Amy Keating Rogers, she was a very special example. What makes her the exception is how different she was and how she was able to stand out in the eyes of the fandom. Looking back on all of her Season 5 episodes, she gave Gilda proper closure with Rainbow Dash, gave Rarity her long-awaited boutique and challenged her vision as an artist, gave the CMC their cutie marks after all their hard work and letting them focus on other aspects of their lives, and with this episode, we see how AJ is at her best when she's helping out others. Amy was there with Lauren Faust from the very beginning up until beyond her departure from the show. And seeing how Amy was able to fulfill two of her original goals in one season, along with all of the other good writing she did, it truly shows how she knew what Lauren wanted for the show more than anyone else on the staff or even the entire fandom. It's a bittersweet feeling, but a really good kind of bittersweet. And I'm really glad that I got a chance to revisit that kind of feeling when I came back to this episode. Alright, get in the party howitzer. What? No, why would I do that? Time's up! Get in the party howitzer, or get eviscerated. Your choice. Give me your spine so that I may beat you with it! Howitzer it is! Bye! Now go and relax. You take your job way too seriously.
But I have a bloodlust that must be sated! You can't just... Cheater. Razzle